Divine Truth Frequently Asked Questions Jesus, Mary and others provide answers to questions that are frequently asked by members of the media and the public. Can you define the role of a parent? Well, firstly, I thought uh, with this particular question that it's important for me to state that it's not up to me to define the role of a parent because somebody else has already defined the role. <laughs> so, so the real question really is what, how, how has God defined the role of a parent? That, to me, is the most important question. Now, God defines the role of a parent in very unique ways that are, that are not the same as what people on earth define the role as a parent. And obviously, um, God's definition of the role of a parent is very different because, it, because God has a different perspective on parenting than what most people on the planet have as a perspective on parenting. So God's perspective on parenting is this. God has made all these children. Now, there's literally billions and billions of children that God, have, God has made, and each of them need to incarnate in order to begin to the process of individualization. In other words, they've got to come to Earth and at least be introduced to life as an experience before they have any awareness of themselves, before they have any self-awareness and, self, and awareness of themselves as an individual. In other words, they've got to go through a process. Now, before they come, unlike most you know, people believe and a lot of you know, teachings about reincarnation state, mm -hmm they did not have a conscious existence of themselves. They existed as a soul, and as a half of a soul actually, but they didn't have a conscious awareness of themselves. But in coming to the earth, they gain a conscious awareness of themselves. That's the whole point of coming to the earth, in fact. Now, bearing all that in mind, that means that God is their true parent, not us. All we've done is create their physical and spiritual bodies through the sexual process. So as parents, we are not really their parents. So, so from God's perspective, we're not their parents. God's their parents, and we are like the creators of the two forms, the physical and the spiritual bodies, in, in which or through which they can experience life. Yep. In other words, God has involved us in, in the individualization process by giving us the ability through the sexual procreation, the ability to create a spirit and a physical body in order for this unincarnated soul to connect to the spirit and physical worlds. Now, if we look at it from that perspective, we can see that actually from God's perspective, we're not the parent, we're just the creator of two bodies and we didn't very, do very much to create that either. <laughs> and you could argue that in some cases we did very little <laughs> or next to nothing <laughs> for, to create those two bodies. Yep. And, and so from God's perspective, we are not the ch child's parents. The child is God's child. And we are, in fact, we have, in fact, a different role. And that role is to create the two bodies for which the child will use, that you know, these two bodies will be used by the child, the soul of the child, yep. to, to, to interface or to connect with its experience of becoming individualised, its experience of learning about itself. Yep. So if you think about it from that perspective, then the way God defines the role of a parent is we are only the creators of the vessels in, that the child will use for a specific period of time, some longer, some shorter, where it will it learn to experience itself. Now, under that, term, under that definition, we can then ask other sub-questions, like, okay, so given that that's the case, what, how does God define the role of a physical parent? Like a person who's on earth who's gone, who's had sex yeah, with somebody yeah. <laughs> and created these two bodies into which the child has incarnated. Now, I feel that's a very important question uh, because there are lots of very important things that the, that the parent's role, if it's engaged correctly in harmony with love, what they would do. So I feel the first role that we have is to teach the child about what we have learned about God and the universe. So that's one of the roles that yep. we, we have as a parent. Now that doesn't mean to force upon the child our belief systems, because if we're truly humble, 
we will acknowledge that we don't know everything and therefore, and also many of the things that we think we do know, we actually don't know. And so, you know, to force those particular belief systems upon the child wouldn't be very advantageous. But it's important to share those particular things with the child. Secondly, another role is to share, and, and this is a primary role, and that is to share love with the child. We want to teach the child in particular about love. And the reason why we want to teach the child in particular about what we've learned about love is because the whole universe operates, all of God's laws operate on love as the underlying principle. So, so the more we can share the ch with the child about love and teach the child about love, the more we're teaching the child about the universe and about God and God's laws. Right. The third thing that is very important, and by the way, these are not in order of importance that I'm listing them. These are just very important things that are a part of God's definition of the role of the parent, yeah. right? And, uh, and I'm happy for you to ask individual questions about each one if you, if you want to before I proceed to the next one. Yeah. I know there's other a couple questions of these, later, yeah. but, but we want to define the role as a parent as a part of this question, I feel. Yeah. So... What's, what's, what's the point? Like, what's our, like, so if, if our children, well, what we, what we say, well, let's say what we say, you know, our children, are <laughs> well, not actually which our is children. In itself, <laughs> which is in itself not a very honest or true statement. Yeah. They're not our children, they're God's children, which I've just created a vessel for. Now, how do we say that properly? I don't know, using the English language. Yeah. But, but it's very important to see that even the way we see our children is already incorrect before we begin parenting. Yeah. Does that make sense? And that's the problem, that before we even begin parenting, we've already begun by assuming they're our children, which is an invalid assumption. And, mm. and that is very important to understand. They're not our children. They're God. So it's like you're being given the care of somebody else's child. <laughs> what are you going to do with that? Yeah. What, what would you choose to do with that if it was you get being given this care? Because you've been given the care of two of them. Yeah. Um, so what would you choose to do with that? Now, what I, one of the things I would choose to do as that, if you like, surrogate, is to firstly show them who their real parent is. That would be one of the things I would definitely choose to do, to, to discuss with them, you know, the universe around them, how it's all governed by love, and this is all a reflection about their real parent, who their real parent is. That, that's a pretty... Confronting thing, I suppose, for a parent is the, you know, for to be told, you know, you're not actually their parent. You're you're a surrogate. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, and I know, you know, I, I've, yeah, when I sort of started to realise this, I was like, wow, this is that's pretty big. Like, yep. well, you know, what's the what's what's the point? Like, what? Why has God done it this way? Well, I suppose that is another question too that we can ask. I think you've even think, got yeah, that in the we do list. Have that one, but, yeah. But I feel we need to spend more time on this issue first of how God defines the role because um, the reasons why God has done it is separate to what we can do as parents, yeah. I feel. And it's very important that we understand from God's perspective the role of being a parent rather than thinking about like why did God do it, what's the point of all of this first. That's a subsequent question, I feel, yeah. which, which, which has valid answers, of course. But... I feel the more important questions are what, what, are, what, what is the definition of the role, as you've asked in this question. And, and as I've mentioned, I feel the first thing is this very important is, issue of introducing the child to the world, to the universe, and introducing the child to God, introducing the chi child to God's laws, introducing the child to... Uh, truth, introducing the child to love, introducing the child to humility, introducing the child to other things that yeah. we have an eternal existence. All of these other things need to be introduced to the child, not as a lecture, but, uh, but through the parent's example of the parent learning these particular yeah. things and talking to the child about these kind of things as the child is growing and not forcing the child to accept any of it either because to do so would be against or out of harmony yeah. with the laws yeah. of free will. So, so it's a matter of sharing with the child. Now, as a parent, though, one of the primary roles and one of the primary things that God has defined for us is, to, is that God has given a whole structure, if you like, under which the universe operates. And we could refer to that structure as God's laws, right? Yep. All of God's laws are loving. 
Now, if we as a parent avoid setting up loving laws inside of our family, we are teaching the child to become rebellious to God's laws. So one very important role, if you like, or definition of being the parent is to actually teach the child there are laws or constraints. If they are truly loving, there, there, there are laws that are based around love that will guide their actions. Now, and there would need to be some kind of consequence if the law of love isn't actually upheld. Now, God automatically engages these consequences. So we don't have to create any more laws than what God has created necessarily. All we need to do is make sure that the child sees the outcome of embracing the law, which is always going to be happy and positive, or sees the outcome of um, rebelling against the law, which is always going to result in pain and suffering. So whenever the child feels pain and suffering, yeah. the child understands that it, it partly is because of its own choice to do something about breaking the law. Now, of course, to understand all of those principles, it's, it's important that the parent... You've got to understand <laughs> you have them to yourself. You understand them yourself, <laughs> right. And this is where I feel the big problem is with parenting on the planet at the moment, is that the majority of parents have no idea about any of God's laws. They have no idea about God's definition of love. They have no idea of what God's definition of truth is. They have no idea what it means to be humble. And so it's almost impossible for them now to appropriately bring up their children. Yeah. And this is the problem that we have. To really bring up a child, the parent is going to have to be, become far more humble generally than they currently are and realise all of these basic fundamental truths before they'll be able to actually appropriately as, uh, um, absorb the role in which God has placed them, if you like. Yeah. So if the parent doesn't understand God's laws and, you know, and love, basically, yep. um, it's almost a bit pointless trying to um, create your own pseudo set of you know, rules or um, a loving environment or... Yeah, I, I wouldn't say it's ever pointless because in the process, you come to learn about love yourself, right, through this interaction. This is what we'll discuss as you ask different questions. I don't feel it's ever pointless for the parent to set up rules or laws inside of their own household. I feel it's imperative that they understand how those rules or laws apply to God's rules or laws yeah. and whether they are actually doing the same as God's. Now, my feelings are this, and these feelings are very strong when it comes to parenting, if you as a parent are not very sincere about finding out what God's laws are and you're not very sincere about living in harmony with them and you're not very sincere about, you know, doing the things that you need to do in order to, to embrace love in your life, then how can you ever expect your children to be sincere about those particular things? Yep. To expect your child to do so would be hypo hypo hypocritical. So... My suggestion to parents is, first thing, if they're going to become parents, they need to analyse whether they are personally sincere about doing all of those things first. Yep. Now, we can't expect our child to do something that we're not willing to do. So you think about it. We are a child of God. If we're not willing to see God's definition of love and we're not willing to see God's definition of truth, and we're not willing to see God's definition of humility and we're not willing to see a lot of things in God's universal laws, then now let's place this role as we're the parent and imagine for a moment that we actually have a child, which we don't actually have because yep. we've already yep. mentioned that, but imagine in, that in our own mind we believe, oh, I've now got this newborn child. How can we ever expect that this child honours my law, that this child honours my definition of love, this child honours my definition of truth, this child becomes humble enough to accept my definition of things. If I've not done that with God, how can I then expect the child to do it with me? Yep. And this is where I feel it's very important that we understand the role in which God has placed us by allowing us to create the physical and material bodies into which his child becomes incarnate and individualised. Once we understand these pr basic principles in our own relationship with God, then we can inculcate them in our child. But that means, don't go down the track then as a parent and saying, 
oh, I don't know what God's laws are, so I'm not going to give my child any. Right? That, that would be actually a disaster for your life, which, which you'll find out very rapidly by the time the child's two years of age, generally. <laughs> you'll find out that you made some mistakes along that line because the child has no <laughs> guidelines, no direction, and often has complete control of the family by that stage, yep. and that would be a disaster for the rest of the family. And in fact, everyone in the family, their free will would be impacted by one very spoiled child under those yep. circumstances. So we can't say, oh, because I don't know and because I'm ignorant, I'm not going to do anything. Do anything. Yep. And in fact, this is one of the lessons of love. You can't choose to do nothing. That's one of God's yep. lessons of love. Whenever you even choose to do nothing or think you're chosen to do nothing, you've actually chosen, chosen. something. Yep. And, there, and there are laws involved when you choose things. Um, that all have consequences. Some of them, the consequences are happy and some of the consequences are sad and painful, depending on whether we, if they're happy, whether we supported the law and lived in harmony with the law or whether it was sad and we broke the law. That, you know, that's what the cause of the pain and suffering is. So if, if we understand these underlying principles, we will never as a parent go, oh, I abdicate all <laughs> responsibility for, for training this child in these particular laws because you'll find by the child is a very you know, young child, just a few, a few months old, usually by the time it's one year old, it will be, it will be bossing your entire life around and, and you'll feel the penalty of not yeah. taking such actions, um, which is a part of the consequence, if you like, of breaking this law of love with our child. It's not the, a loving thing to choose to abdicate responsibility for the child and particularly to abdicate responsibility for the child you yes. drew into your life through the creation of its bodies. Yeah. It's, it, to abdicate responsibility is a very unloving thing to do and you'll definitely feel the consequences of, of the abdication if you continue with that kind of action. So I feel once we understand that God, God's desire is for us as parents to learn about what it feels like to be a parent, right? And, but also to, to inculcate in the mm. child, right, all of these different principles about God and God's universe and God's nature and, and the universe itself and how it works and all of these different things. That is the primary definition of the role of a parent from God's perspective. Now, uh, that's not my personal perspective. That's a, personal, that's a perspective I've had to also, as a parent, because I have two children, uh, have had to also come to terms with. I don't see my children, as the saying is, as my children. They are my brothers. I've got two sons and I see them as not my sons. They are my brothers. And all I am is an older child of God. In other words, I yeah. incarnated before them. Now, hopefully that means that I know a bit more than they do but it's not always a guarantee, <laughs> yeah, yeah. right? And, uh, and in fact, if I've spent little of my life investigating God's laws, little of my life practising love, little of my life being humble and, and wanting truth, then it's highly likely that my children will know more by the time they're two or three years of age about the universe than I will. Because, and in fact, if I continue to inculcate upon them my definition, I'll destroy their knowledge through this process. So... So, you know, if I hold on to these concepts that I am the parent, I'm the boss, I'm the person that dictates what mm. to do or say, then I'm already out of harmony with love from God's perspective. And it's interesting, I find, how many mothers and fathers say that to their children, children particularly when they're in a rage because the child isn't doing something or what. I'm your parent, you must listen to me, or I'm your mother, how dare you? I brought yes. you into the world. No, you didn't. You made through a process two bodies and sure, the mother's process was nine months, whereas the father is, is maybe a few minutes <laughs> or, or even less than that perhaps sometimes. <laughs> um, but, uh, but the reality is it, it is still not your parent. You are still not the child's mother. All you've done is cared for the physical and spiritual bodies of this child for nine months. Yep. That's all you've done. And you've got to get your mind and your feelings in perspective of, as to how God sees this whole, whole process. Now, when we do that, we truly care for the child because we know it's not mine, it's not ours. Yep. The child is God's. And as such, it's a very deep responsibility to care for the child as God would care for this child. Yep. 